Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 4 from IMO 1987. Prove that there is no function f from the set of non-negative integers to itself such that f of f of n is equal to n plus 1987 for every n. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I thought, okay, what is so special about number 1987? So I tried replacing that with some smaller numbers to get an intuition into uh, what's going on. So let's say I replace that with 1, f of f of n equals n plus 1. Taking f from both sides, we get f of f of f of n equals f of n plus 1. And f of f of f of n by the given identity is f of n plus 1. So what does that tell us? That tells us f of n plus 1 is f of n plus 1 which means if I look at f of n that's equal to f of n minus 1 plus 1 f of n minus 2 plus 2 etc so that tells us this is equal to f of 0 plus n now if we apply the equality that they gave us they gave us f of f of n is equal to n plus 1 so this tells you f of f of n is f of n plus f of 0 so that's n plus 1. Now f of that would be n plus f of 0 plus another f of 0. This is a shift by f of 0. So that's equal to n plus 1, which gives us 2 f of 0 equals 1. And that is, in fact, not possible. OK, so what about if I replace 1987 by 2? I get f of f of n equals n plus 2. Okay, so that's clearly possible because you could just replace uh, f of n by n plus 1. So that is possible. So at that point, I suspected that it has something to do with uh, uh, 1987 being odd. Because for even, if you have any even number, you can define f of n to be n plus k. And then f of f of n becomes n plus 2k. So that's perfectly possible when this number is even. But it looks like maybe for odd it is not possible. But let's at least try 3 and see if we can prove that it is not possible for 3. And that would give us a better idea. So let's, let's see if that's possible. Okay, so let's do something similar. f of f of f of n is going to be, by the assumption, it is f of n plus 3. And if I take the f from both sides of this, I get f of n plus 3. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing that I notice is that f is 1 to 1. And the reason is, if I have f of a equals f of b, I can extract a and b from that. I can write it down as f of f of a equals f of f of b, which means a plus 3 equals b plus 3, which means a equals b. So in fact, f is 1 to 1. Now, I also have this equality. So what does that tell us? It tells us f of n plus 3 is equal to f of n plus 3. So that tells us if I add 3 to n, then f is increased by 3, which means I can evaluate f based on the remainder when I divide that by 3. So f of 3k plus 0 becomes f of 0 plus 3k. And in general, f of 3k plus any remainder would be f of the remainder plus 3k. So this is what I get. Now, I was hoping that I can get a contradiction from here, and then I can extend the same idea to 1987. OK, so let's see what happens um, when f of 0 is 0 mod 3. So we have three possibilities. f of 0 could be 0 mod 3, 1 mod 3, or 2 mod 3. So if that's the case, then f of f of 0, since f of 0 is a multiple of 3, by this, it would have to be f of 0 plus the inside, which is f of 0. So it's 2f of 0. On the other hand, f of f of 0 by assumption is 0 plus 3. So these two must be the same, which is not possible. 
what if f of 0 is 1 mod 3? If that's the case, I will have to use this guy. I will have to use f of f of 0 is equal to, so since the remainder is 1, I will have to replace this one with f of 1 plus f of 0 minus 1. So you take the number, subtract the remainder, and then you do f of the remainder. So number minus the remainder, and then f of the remainder. So this is what it gives me. On the other hand, I know that f of f of 0 is 3. So what does this give me? That tells me f of 1 plus f of 0 is in fact 4. But I know that f of 0 is 1 mod 3. So that tells you f of 1 is 0 mod 3. So I went from f of 0, 1 mod 3 to f of 1, 0 mod 3. So that means if I look at f of 2, it's probably going to be the third remainder. f of 2 would be 2. So now in order to prove that, I have to make this observation. So let's just say f of 2 is also 1 mod 3. So then there's going to be an issue here because f of 2 and f of 0 have the same remainders. So what does it mean? It means f of 0 plus some multiple of 3 is equal to f of 2 plus another multiple of 3. So let's see what happens from here. From here, this guy is f of 3k and the other guy, this side, is f of 3l plus 2. And that's not true because f is 1 to 1. Okay, so what does that tell us? It tells us f of 2 must be 2 mod 3. Now, let's see if that leads us to a contradiction. So f of f of 2 is equal to 2 plus 3 based on the assumption. On the other hand, because it is 2 mod 3, we'll have to do f of 2 plus f of 2 minus the remainder. So f of the remainder plus the number minus the remainder. And from here, we get 2f of 2 is equal to 3, which is clearly not possible. Okay, so what I, what I observed was that when I get something that is this itself, mod 3, I get a contradiction. And when I get something that is the other re remainder, then the uh, remainder, um, the other remainder goes back to the original one. So then I thought, okay, maybe I can extend this idea to 1987. Okay, so 1987 seems to be arbitrary except for the fact that 1987 is odd. So for simplicity, let's call that K. So let K be 1987. Okay, so what we know is that K is odd. That's the only thing we're going to use. Now, let's just start from the beginning. So the assumption is this is equal to N plus K. Let's apply F to both sides. So F of F of F of N is equal to F of N plus K. Now, F of F of something is that number plus K. So that means by induction... f of n plus km is going to be f of n plus km for all n and m greater than or equal to 0 by induction on m. Okay, so we have this equality. Now I can apply the idea that we talked about. So the second thing was f is 1 to 1. f is 1 to 1. And why is that 1 to 1? Because this is the second claim. Because if f of a is equal to f of b, then by taking f from both sides, we get f of f of a is equal to f of f of b, which means a plus k is equal to b plus k, which means a equals b. So that's the second thing. Third thing is we want to show that the remainders are different. So the third claim is f of 0 all the way to f of k minus 1 are distinct mod k. Let's assume are, they are not. Suppose, on the contrary, f of i is equal to, uh, is congruent to f of j 
mod k for some i less than j greater than or equal to 0 less than k. Okay, let's see what happens. If that's the case, that tells us that f of i plus a multiple of k is equal to f of j plus another multiple of k. So for some integers l and m. So this tells us this is equal to f of i plus km, which is f of j plus kl, but that tells us i plus km must be the same as j plus kl. And that's a contradiction because that tells us i and j must be the same mod k, which is a contradiction. Because if we look back at what we had here, i and j were between 0 and k, so they cannot be congruent to each other. So we just showed that the remainders are also all different. Now that the remainders are different, we are going to show that we can pair them up. So look at f of f of n. This is the same as n plus k. So what does it mean? It means if you take that mod k, this is n. So f of n, if you take f of that, this is going back to n mod k. And then if you take f of that, it goes back to here. So if you look at n and f of n, if you look at this pair of numbers, f of n would be this one, and f of this one would be the other one because of the uh, assumptions of the problem and because of the discussion that I had up here. What does that mean? We have k numbers. 0, 1, all the way to k minus 1, and k is odd. If you look at these numbers, each one of them can be paired up with f of itself, with, with its f. Because k is odd, there is a number, there is some j between 0 and less than k, such that f of j is congruent to itself, mod k. Now, let's see what happens from here. So what does it mean? It means when I look at f of f of j, I know this is j plus k by assumption. On the other hand, because this is uh, f of j is congruent to j, this would be also equal to. So the remainder of f of j when you divide by k is j, and the rest of it is a multiple of k. So we get something like this. This is a multiple of k. We can take it out. We can write it down as f of j minus j plus f of j. So these two are the same. So what does that tell us? It tells us j plus k is equal to 2f of j minus j, which means k is equal to 2 times f of j minus j. And that is a contradiction because k was odd. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And I will see you in the next video.